Hi, my name is Lenny Hall. I'm here at National Wood Flooring Association headquarters having a meeting with other regional instructors and while we were here yesterday we were talking about the use of travel points and how to strike 45 degree angles on the floor and I introduced the thought of how to do 30 degree and 60 degree angles using the travel points. So I'm here to demonstrate that method for you. So I have two equally marked points from a center point on a trammel on the uh, straight line and I'm going to widen my trammel points so that I can then create two intersecting lines above and below the line. If I kept them in the same position and I moved the channel point here, my pen mark would be right on the starting point of my initial channel position. So I need to have a longer mark. I find the center point, with the intersection of these two lines, and I'll draw an X up here. Move to the other channel position. And what I now have is I have two intersecting marks above and below the center line, which will be perpendicular to the first starting line. And I'll draw that with a thick marker as well. This marker is so thick, I have to account for some fatness of the line being drawn. So what we have here now is the typical four quadrant, 90 degree lines that we have separated by the trammel points. Now, uh, the standard lesson would be to uh, basically make a 45 degree angle from this and that would be uh, dividing this 90 degree angle into two. Because that's actually what we did when we struck this line is we took the angle of a straight line which is 180 degrees and with using channel points and their intersecting mark, it bisects the angle or it divides it into two. So we have two 90 degree sections on the, on the floor. So in a typical, um, schools where we teach the channel points, we would then divide this into uh, two quadrants in the 90 degree zone, which would be a 45 and a 45. But for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to do a 30 degree, 60 degree mark. And with that, it requires a little bit of a trigonomic uh, identity, which is the 1, 2, square root of 3 triangle. And I'm going to attempt to draw it upside down so it's upside up for the camera. So what we have in geometry is if you have a 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree triangle, the sides are in the ratio of 1, the square root of 3, with a hypotenuse of 2. And we use this information to be able to strike 30 degree and 60 degree lines from our center line of our project. So how we do that is that we're first going to mark a unit distance, we call that anything related to one is called a unit distance and it doesn't really matter what that is on the ruler. It doesn't have to be a, a physical number, it's just the distance between the channel point and the marking instrument, in this case a pen. So this distance here now is going to be one, one of whatever that is. So and I'm going to make sure I can do two, because that's really the, the catch of the whole thing. And I'm going to shorten that up a little bit to make sure I can still catch on my working line. Okay, so from the center intersecting here, I'm going to mark my first of two units here. And as you see, I drew the first uh, trem tremble point with a triangle. This one I'm going to draw with a circle so I can distinguish one from the other. Now I'm going to draw my second unit by just transferring the tremble points over to 
my one unit distance and marking a two unit distance. Okay, so that distance is two. I haven't changed anything yet. I'm going to mark my trail point distance here as one unit. Okay, so what I've done is I've got two legs of a triangle. But this is not really how you're going to set the triangle up on the uh, points because it's actually backwards. What I've done is draw on a one segment leg. And then on this leg, I actually have a distance of two, and I really want a distance of the square root of three. That's really hard to find on travel points. But what I've done is on a straight line, I have a distance of two, which I can now reposition my travel points from the center mark to the two mark. And the, the more care you take about being precise about this, the more precise the instrument will work and your layout will work. So I have my channel point set up now to measure a distance of two. So what I want to do is now put something on the floor that's going to have this length of two. And that simply is a circle, or part of a circle, that I'm going to draw on the floor now. It's going right over my two unit mark. Anywhere on that curve, I'm two units away from the center point of this, which means that anywhere on a circle that comes across this point of intersection is on that curve, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I need to intersect that curve with this um, origin so that my angle is 30 degrees. And how do I do that? Because I have my unit one here already, that's this leg here, I want to transfer my one unit this way through to the curve and then bring that intersection point back down to the origin. So how I would do that is I would strike this as I did my straight line on the floor and that is working a 180 degree line into two 90 degree zones by splitting it with the channel points. And I want to adjust my channel points so I make a nice little cross mark on the floor within the area I got to work in. So this is my intersection, uh, sorry, this is my intersection point of one unit. That's why you draw marks on the floor so you can remember. This is my one unit mark, my one unit mark, my two unit mark. So from here, let's make sure I can get to the other side of the straight line. And I'm just a little bit outside. So I've got some distance measured here, and I turn it on this side, measure some distance here, and again I'm going to mark that with something so I can distinguish it, so this time I'm going to use a diamond. So for these two diamonds I can then take, again I need to extend my cutting point longer so I can make a crosshair up there. So now what I've done is bisected this straight 180 degree line by using my channel points with the two crosshairs here. If I strike that line now, I'm using my fat marker, again, I'm going to repeat this a lot. You want to do this with as thin a writing instrument as possible so the lines are very accurate. All right, so I'm going to strike this with a fat marker. And again, thin marking instruments are the best bet for this type of thing. So, what we have here is 
two lines now, and we know that this line is parallel to this line because it came off of the same perpendicular line. So both of these are 90 degree angles. And what we'd have is when this straight line intersects our two unit curve, that intersection, we draw a line out to the origin. And what we have now is drawing a 30 degree angle from that line. And uh, you can repeat this now per quadrant because channel points have this very unique characteristic of dividing angles in half. We know that the other angle is 60 degrees. That is this one. Oh, back one, sorry. This angle here, since it's the complementary angle of 90, is 60 degrees. But we can split that one in half too by taking our channel points. Drawing on the floor another part of the circle. And then where these two points are intersecting the perpendicular line and my 30 degree angle line, which can be also called a 60 degree angle line, I make a crosshair. But I want my X to be very defined, so I want to put this a little shorter. Sometimes you gotta read, sometimes the redraw the angle and make sure they intersect. And where that intersects now, it's gonna divide the 60 degree angle into two 30 degree segments. square root of 3 triangle property of having a 30 degree, 60 degree, and 90 degree angle triangle. So now you see that we can establish 30 degree and 60 degree work lines on a job site. Uh, this could be useful for doing uh, parquet patterns that involve these angles, for instance a hexagon parquet pattern. Uh, you can create a medallion with 30 degree or 15 degree wedges instead of the standard uh, 45, 22 and a quarter, uh, 22 and a half angles. Um, as far as what I did here, a magic marker, this can be extended to any distance you can carry a straight line with. And as long as you have a very stiff piece of material to mount your travel points to, you can have this at 1 feet, 10 feet, or 20 feet long and mark lines and snap lines straight. So anything I did with magic marker can easily be done with chalk lines. Again, the finer the line, the more accurate your uh, angles will be on your measurements and when you do your uh, work. I have used Tremble points for job layouts, I've done them for wraparounds, being able to connect the parallel line in one room to the opposite room of another room with two doorways, and so my two rooms become parallel. I've used tremble points to create compasses and medallions on my own in my shop, which is a fun thing to do as a woodworker. It's a challenge and something very satisfying when you can complete your own medallion instead of having to buy something off the shelf. And for the most part, uh, the fun part is that you don't really buy anything. Everything you have is in your shop. All the scrap pieces of wood that came from job sites, all the leftovers. You can create a lot of beautiful artwork with almost nothing other than your imagination and some simple techniques with the channel points.